This video This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people where millions get to explore together. Skillshare has got thousands of classes. As artists, you're going to love discovering topics in fine art, illustration, and more. Lots of Skillshare classes are under 60 minutes. With short lessons, you can fit them into the busiest of schedules. Our main website, artprof.org, is our home base, and I've always wanted to improve how to write copy for our website. I decided to watch Copywriting for Beginners, how to write web copy that sells without being cheesy with copywriting veteran Jesse Forrest. This class was so helpful because it explained in great detail all of the various formats of websites that I really hadn't considered before when writing copy for our website. I learned so many useful specifics like how to write copy that will gain an audience's trust and how to integrate copy with visual elements in a website. The first 1,000 people to click the link in our YouTube video description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Hey everybody! Today we're doing a studio hangout, but if your studio habits need a kick in the butt, our prof has everything you need, tutorials, critiques, and professional development. So Alex, what are you painting today? I am painting, I wanted to kind of flex my portrait muscles a little bit. So I'm painting a portrait of the uh, protagonist in an old 70s film called Quadrophenia, which is uh, based on and featuring music from The Who and a bunch of scooters. So it's it's a fun movie. <laughs> it sounds great. I, I would never have guessed through this portrait. I want to see the scooters. The scooters, they're rad. Really cool modded up scooters with a lot of rear view mirrors. Yeah, I should have painted a scooter. I'll do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on? Um... I took this video of pigeons during the art prof meetup in New York a few months ago with me and Deepti, and it was a lot of pigeons. And I thought I would try experimenting with this liquid graphite and the super shine silver that I got from Garapy, which is totally outside my wheelhouse. So this mm. might turn out really badly, but I thought I'd at least try. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff is so... By the shy. way, everybody, we would love it for you to work on your personal artwork with us during this live stream. And then afterwards, to join us in the Discord, in the post live streams channel, and share the work that you're doing. Because that's one of my favorite parts of this community, is that we make all this work together. And then seeing the diversity of what comes out is just wonderful. And by the way, I am moderating today, and Lauren and Alex are the performers for today. I get to chill. Hello. Is that what we're doing? I guess this is drawing, painting live, just performing. Anna is asking like a... what? There was an art prof meetup in New York. How did I not know? I don't know. It's tricky with sometimes the algorithms. You don't always see the posts in a timely manner. What I would recommend if people want to stay on top of special events and those big announcements, subscribe to our email list. That's the only surefire way to get the information or join the discord and check the news channel regularly. If you want to subscribe to our email list, just go down to the YouTube video description below. There is a link for our email list because that would have been so fun to have you there, Anna. Yeah, I was back in November. I, I know November was a really busy time. Oh, was it November? There was grass. I can't remember. The <laughs> but uh, it was it, it was good. It was it was good to see a few of the, the New York and New Jersey group. Um, and I hope that we'll have another one because it, it was, it seemed like it went really well. So don't worry, we might have more. Alex, this is Kareen's first live stream event with us. Welcome Kareen, we're What's so up, happy to have you here. Welcome. Yeah, and Kareen, if you're working on something, please hang out in the Discord afterwards because it's 
it, I like to think of like these studio hangout when you share your work. It's not about critique at the end. It's just casually like, hey, look what I did. So do, 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 do. no pressure work. Yeah. This is this is my fun thing to do today before I tackle hard things. Taha says, I'm drawing dried figs in continuation to pistachios and almonds I've drawn before. It's a series in a nutshell. Ah, <laughs> that was that near level humor there. That was really yes. good. That's pretty, yeah. Gold star for that. <laughs> Caroline says, I'm doing a term paper. I should be drawing pretty pictures. I'm not made for this. I'm not either. <laughs> There's so many things I do not miss about school. And one of them is writing papers and taking exams. I don't miss that. Do you, Lauren? Or, or, Lauren, do you have to do that for your grad program? Yeah, yeah. For thesis, I'm going to have to write a 30 to 50 page paper, I think. Oh, I think it might be less than oh, that. But, that's kind of yeah. cool. And I've had to write 20 page papers for my art history classes. And that was a lot. So yeah. And the writing is, the reading is really dense too. It's funny, I don't miss tests, but I actually like writing papers. Really? Yeah, it's kind of like the, the same vibe that like, nonfiction podcast give me now where you can just kind of zone in and deep dive into one topic but you have to write you have to write things I don't think <laughs> research. it's the writing that kills me this is the part of where being raised by a teacher becomes apparent where i'm like but the writing is how you learn and remember it <laughs> oh god you're such a dork <laughs> <laughs> you copy your homework but then Alex. i don't learn anything the other day, you said the rules are what makes it fun. No, yeah. no, boo. <laughs> you know what, Alex? You're one of those students who probably showed up to class and would say to the professor, shouldn't we hand in our papers? <laughs> I can totally see that. I was not that bad, but I was close. It was close. I was the person that said, oh, I need an extension. I was <laughs> sick. Lacey Jane says, hello from Seattle, working on a portrait in acrylic, and I'm using Alex's complimentary color underpainting technique. Alex, you're converting people to this religion of complimentary color underpaintings. <laughs> I'm so glad because, dude, it just changes your mind about how you start to look at the color in the piece. I'm, yeah, let us, oh, now you're, now you got to share what you're working on in the Discord afterwards. <laughs> there we go. Karen says, your diversity is what makes art prof fun. Thank you so much for saying that, Thanks, Karen, dude. because yeah. I oftentimes think that our YouTube channel has suffered from its lack of focus because we don't only do videos of drawing cherries and colored pencil. And because we have six artists and not one, I don't think the algorithm likes that very much, that you're as likely to find a stream about Rembrandt as you are about Spider-Man on oh, our YouTube yeah. channel. <laughs> I kind of love that. Mm hmm It feels right. <laughs> well, why does everything have to be so categorized? Why can't it be more spontaneous in terms of learning? If, if Spider-Man helps you learn, great! Yeah. I only learn things that I think I'll be interested in. So having things like Sp like Spider-Man is good because if it was just straight up, let's talk about proportion, I wouldn't learn it. Or let's yeah. talk about perspective. Nope. Tiffany says, hi, all. Love the different styles and all the laughter and fun. Lauren, I've done a total 360 
when I was teaching at RISD a million years ago, well, it's not that I didn't think learning could be fun. It's just I felt so much peer pressure to be all serious and reserved. And somehow that was more accepted as valid teaching. But I totally disagree now. I don't know. Have you changed your mind, Lauren? Yeah, I've gotten soft since RISD, but that's fine. I ran into, <laughs> actually, I ran into Tashi the other day while I was Ooh. celebrating old art prof Casey Runin's birthday. Casey Runin was one of our TAs. And we, we reminisced about how hard your class was and how <laughs> miserable we were, but <laughs> loved it. And both said, oh, wow, we, we've really gone beyond that now. We, we've really softened up since then. That's a real feeling. I remember it being so like, go, go, go. And like, almost in a weird way, like the suffering is what makes it art, you know? It's yeah. Such a weird mindset. But yeah. it's encouraged. Do you remember how there there was this bragging about how many all-nighters people would do? <sighs> That's not good. Mm -hmm. You know what I changed my mind? I changed my mind because huh. for some people, that intense learning and work can really work. Work for me. I loved working super hard and pushing myself but it doesn't work for everybody and i think the people for whom it does not work it can be very bad mental health mm -hmm. physical health wise and that's what worries me about that approach yeah like it's cool if you got it in you but it that you said it perfectly that idea of like that's the only way to work yeah yeah it's very really not true it narrows it, it narrows down who can be an artist, which makes the whole world suffer because then you only get these people yeah. who are very I feel like it also just makes you kind of a not a bad person, but a less empathetic person <laughs> to be in that for yeah. a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blue Wolf is saying, Lauren, can you tell us more about the liquid charcoal? What's in the left cup? And is it a liquid like an ink or more gel-like? Ooh, good question, Blue. Okay, so this darker one, this is the this is the liquid graphite. And it comes in a dispersion, meaning it's an ultra-concentrated pigment. And so I have to mix it with a binder. And I used a urethane binder which makes it super shiny also unfortunately makes it dry really fast which i'm not loving but i'm working through it and i've been adding water to it to smear it out and to create different shapes and stuff this is a totally different thing this is called super shine silver and it's the same type of thing that they use to make cars shiny. They get that metallic color, which I love so much. So I also mixed that with the urethane binder to make it even shinier. And then I mixed it with a thickener to make it super thick. And I haven't used it yet. I'm going to try to, I've used it in my other paints before, and I really like what it does. It may, I have always felt let down by metallic paints and this is the first metallic paint that I haven't been let down by because it's so ultra metallic -y. it's really cool so we'll see how it goes with this black and white thing here I'm not totally used to it I'm gonna try and figure it out Lauren you're using Yupo paper is that why you're getting that super washy look yes I'm using Yupo paper the Yupo I found mixes with the it's a nice surface for the Gara paints. The Gara paints tend to be a little glossier. They've got a lot of, I think, was it resin in it? And the Yupa paper is also glossy and holds them on the top really nicely. So that, <clears throat> that's why I'm using them together. 
Charismatic says, mm -hmm. is this what I have to look forward to in college? Not necessarily. Really depends on the college, the professor. Believe me, there were blow-off classes at RISD where <laughs> the teacher uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> was not paying attention. <laughs> I, I mean, the admin told me that there was a professor there who made the admin do the grades and would just say, give everybody an A. <laughs> Stuff oh like that God. happened. <laughs> That's wow. Weird. Bonkers. Anna says, yes, the pressure in art school to succeed also feeds into your professional life where you feel like a failure comparing yourself to your peers' success. Do you think that's the case, Alex? Oh, yeah. Like, my first couple years outside of graduation were really rough because, and it's confusing to talk about because it's in no way, it was all an internal thing where the success of other people would really make me feel like I had failed when in reality is like you're forgetting that it's apples and oranges dude like doo -doo -doo -doo. everyone's growth and pace is inherently different there we go so i was <laughs> really focusing on that bleed in the eye so i was like and the biggest thing is <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think it is all about kind of um, breaking out of that mind fit, mindset, the earlier the better with school of just only, not to say ignore other students and watch their growth and be inspired by them, but not to judge yourself based on that. Ooh, good advice. Caroline says there's an issue with med school being so physically demanding that disabled people can't get into the field. Interesting conversation. You know, it was terrible when I was at RISD as a student there was a student in a wheelchair and the building that we were in had an elevator, but it was broken. Never was ever fixed the whole time I was there. And you know what they did? They moved all of the students' classes to the first floor. That was their solution. That was not cool. I, I, there, there had to That's be a really million wrong. laws they were breaking by doing that. Yeah, they could have gotten sued. Exactly. Been sued for that before. Lisa says, my favorite lecturers know how to simplify their subject to my level. Often experts feel they must use the proper technical terms, which are more accurate. The proper terms are hard for the layman. This is so true. I've noticed actually when I do my anatomy lectures, even though the cheekbone, technically it's called the zygomatic arch, I don't tend to refer to it as the zygomatic arch very often because it's just another level of comprehension that it doesn't matter if you call it the cheekbone or the zygomatic arch, it's still the same form. Mm. I don't know, Lauren, for you, does that technical terminology, is that hard for you sometimes? I am definitely a believer in using simplified language because I feel shut out of conversations too. Even though I have lots of schooling, it just, the, the opacity is really a shutdown. It's really gatekeeping. Um, at the same time, zygomatic arch is the only an anatomical term I remember from your class. So we can keep that one. It's just such a cool word. It sounds crazy. <laughs> Lindsay's it asking, like a... why are noses so difficult if you have the view under the nose up? Well, that's what you're painting, Alex. Why yeah, do you yeah. think it's hard for people to do that point of view? I think with noses, I feel generally it's easiest to do a nose in profile, right? Um, because that's how we learn a nose looks. But with this one, it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't look like what my brain is telling me a nose should look like. And I think that's the thing is just kind of break yourself out of what you expect to see. And the only thing getting me through this is like isolating these weird little shapes and shadows throughout it and just kind of going with that. I'm not trying to make it look like a nose because if I was, it would not. <laughs> I think it's because people don't like to paint nostrils. 
I think nostrils are ugly and <laughs> people worry that they're going to look like the pig people in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> That's honestly a fair thought. That's probably a little bit of it. Ginger Cell says, any tips how to plan 3D works? Working on the art there, I need to glue it together, but I'm scared. Sketching it out isn't working for me. Honestly, it's just a lot of trial and error. With 3D, oftentimes finding the right adhesive is hard. Sometimes things don't work and you have to try it three or four times. What I try to do is make a little scale version, which is technically it's called a maquette. So if I wanted to sculpt a big sculpture that was two feet tall, I would sculpt a little version of it first to make sure it was actually going to work. But another thing, Ginger Cell, because the art dare this month is to cannibalize your old artwork, see it as one big ongoing experiment. You shouldn't have expectations for the result. I mean, Lauren, you mm. came up <laughs> with cannibalizing your own artwork. Do you have any tips? <laughs> I don't even know why you pulled that out of anything that I've ever said ever, because I'm so bad at cannibalizing my own artwork. I'm so one and done about my paintings. So I think it's something that takes, it's, it's, it's an exposure. So you have to keep doing it and keep trying. Start with, start with, a, start with little things small small versions of what's the word something that's low risk and then build up to your risk so for this the sketch point do the cannibalizing but just experiment on a low level before going into your big shebang carlo from the philippines is here welcome I actually What's left up, art school, have been studying on my own since the pandemic started. I learned a lot more on YouTube and communities, in my opinion. We get that comment fairly often, Carlo. People will say to us, I learned more from your channel than I did at art school. Alex, what do you think about that? Because YouTube wasn't really a thing when you went to art school, and certainly not for me. Yeah, totally. I... Isn't that that big question that I have frequently found a hard time answering? Because I think the answer is not as simple as any one thing. I think a lot of it is that it forces you to kind of go at your own pace. You have all of the benefit, if you want, of sharing a classroom and like participating in our Discord and getting feedback from others. But at the end of the day, it's a lot more... You have to make the learning about your growth, you know, not about the person next to you. I think that... That's one of the things that makes it really easy. But yeah, like Lauren, it's so multifaceted. Like, what's your take on why it's easier sometimes to learn from YouTube than in a classroom setting? You can choose if you want to do the homework or not. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn the things that you want to learn and find the people that you get along there's just more choice and again comes back to that thing where you're going to learn better if it's something that you choose that you feel invested in oftentimes with school you go in and they say okay well you need you need an english requirement and you need a pe requirement this was in my undergrad after RISD. i had to go to pe 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 oh. <laughs> for art Jeez. school <laughs> <laughs> I would pay good money to see that class. <laughs> I, I did swimming. I'm, I have been a competitive swimmer in my youth for over 10 years. So I spent the class teaching other people how to swim. And I, pay, I still had to pay for that credit. It was very ridiculous. <laughs> but... What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you get classes that don't feel relevant and stay unrelevant to things you're interested in and online classes that you choose can alleviate that. At the same time, 
art school, whatever school you go to, you'll do things that you really don't think are going to help you that can change your life. Because when I was a freshman at RISD, we had to take a 3D design class. And I had no interest in 3D. I thought to myself, I'm a figurative painter all the way. And I loved the 3D class so much. And I would never have tried it if I hadn't been required to take that class. And then the flip side also, I was at the museum school in Boston and we had the student do their final review and we looked at their schedule and they'd signed up for five photography classes. And we said to the student, uh, maybe you should try something different. I mean, Alex, <laughs> have you seen that where people are just so laser focused that they actively eliminate other options that could help them actually? Yeah. And in fact, that kind of reminds me of my undergrad career where <laughs> I, <laughs> because I echoed exactly what you said of like going into 3D and just being like, bah, this isn't what I'm about. And then to this day, I learned some of my most important lessons about art making from that class. And uh, then once I finished the requirements of it, I was like, well, that's all done. Now let's just do a lot of what I'm focusing on. And I do think that if yeah. I had more opportunities out of my comfort zone, I think I would have learned in those different ways. Raj says, never went to art school, mainly self-taught. Sometimes I think that puts me at a disadvantage as artists seem to have a network from their days at art school. That is true. Mm. I definitely know people in the field who I never would have met. And largely the difference is that you can really get to know them having a deep relationship because I've met artists online and I've interacted with them. And some of them have been here as guest artists on live streams, but I do not have the relationship I have with them that I have with some of my former professors. What about you, Lauren, in terms of those networks you get at art school? Yeah. That's why I'm at school, mostly. I mean, I wanted to to really get out of a rut that I was in, and I wanted to make the move to, to New York. But I think what has made this, this program really valuable has been all of the really amazing students that I have met and finding people who are like me or different from me in a way that my small town in New Hampshire wasn't quite able to provide. That's that big thing of like knowing how to, to be bold enough like that as an individual to be like, this is going to be really uncomfortable. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blue Wolf is saying, interesting that Lauren is using materials to make the graphite shiny. When so many others try to map the graphite, like Song Kang, what about this piece is calling for shiny Lauren? I'm, I don't know if you can see my reference. I'm, it's in the Discord, everybody. Okay. It's in post live okay. streams. If you want to see Alex and Lauren's reference photos, it's in post live streams channel in the Discord. My reference is actually a video of these pigeons flying. I think I posted a screenshot in there, but I'm working from a video. And the way that these pigeons flew away so quickly all at once was very ephemeral. And, and also the pigeons themselves are very shiny. They're, they have that, that sheen to them, the iridescence. So I wanted to capture both that, that movement and that light of them all going up at once. And I also wanted to get that feathery iridescent quality. So also I never use shiny paint things and I really just wanted to go all out on it. Contemporary Sumera says, I feel like because of YouTube and other online resources, people are forced to be more proactive about their goals and journey and that catapults them in their career. What do you think about that, Alex? That's a good point of like you have you have that world at your fingertips so you can really think of what do I need to learn for this? And I think there is something to be said for 
you know it's a very candorous attitude. Um, like I think of the most helpful YouTube videos that I've watched, even for things of like, I don't know, how to change a bike tire. It's not <laughs> some dude who's like working at a bike shop. It is just a guy who's into bikes. And he's just like, hey, this is such a pain. I figured I'd make a video just to make the world a better place, you know? <laughs> so you get people who are genuinely passionate about their craft, which of course I'm not saying doesn't happen in a school environment, but... I think there's more passionate people than there are teacher jobs, <laughs> to put it bluntly. <laughs> also, when you're in art school, a lot is done for you. There's a lot of things mm. you don't have to lift a finger. It's just there. At RISD, we had the Nature Lab, which is one of my favorite oh, places yeah. on campus. It's a little natural history museum except you get to touch everything and they let you check things out that is such a sweet resource and you are on your own and you don't have a nature lab you got to work harder to get those references don't you think lauren yeah i miss the nature lab all the time in fact if anybody is a student right now at an art school i would highly recommend checking out all of the resources available at your school. Because the one thing I didn't do while I was at school was say, go to the RISD library or go to the RISD museum on my own. I did go to the nature lab a lot because that was really cool. But I miss these resources and I feel as if I lost out not taking advantage of them because they were in fact really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's the nature lab at RISD, the special collections, which is like the... Oh, cool private oh, portion awesome. of the museum where they have works of art that for their own protection can't be on display all the time and that's yeah. that one where it's like man i could have looked at these drawings every day at lunchtime and i didn't um but i mean i know that a lot of schools are very big on sharing their resource if you're interested like i found this past year and i'm wondering if you two have experiences like this where and being like a post-baccalaureate student where I've been taking classes after earning a degree, um, reaching out to schools and being like, hey, I'm not a student, but you're close by. Can I use your library? They're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like it's they're a lot more eager to help than it seems on a website. <laughs> yeah, that's been my experience as well. Because if you email a place and just ask, usually they will be very forthcoming, even places that seem super fancy and exclusive, like the Smithsonian, or I, I don't know, what is it, Yale or Cornell or someplace has classes, like online classes and stuff too. These, I think, if someone demonstrates the willingness or the initiative to learn, a lot of things get opened up to you. But also this is coming from me who's already educated and already has a certain mm -hmm. amount of privileges. So I that also might be biased towards my own experience. That's a very real and frustrating thing to bring up is a lot of it is that that gatekeeping of like, what to say, how to draft an email, you know, those things can be, if you don't have that experience from like, as you say, like past education experiences, it can be hard to make that first introduction. You know, it's very different to be like, oh, I'm a current student at this year university and I want to see your library versus, hey, like I, you know, not in school, but I want to see the library. Like, how do you phrase that? And that can be very intimidating. Thank you, Arby Dick, for the super sticker. Thank you, Arby Dick. We so much appreciate your support, and it is so important. Every contribution you make, a super sticker, a one-time donation via PayPal, becoming a monthly Patreon supporter, our Patreon still remains the biggest chunk of revenue that we receive, and it's super important to us. Please consider supporting us. 
your support is why we can keep our content 100% free. Because Alex, we are running premium tracks now where people mm -hmm. pay to get feedback customized from the staff, voice sessions, but the curriculum we use, the video lessons, the prompts, we call them tracks at our prof. Those are all free. You can do them yeah. totally on your own. And I think that is fairly unique. I don't know a lot of programs that do that. I think usually everything is behind a paywall for good reason, obviously. <laughs> you make a lot more money that way. <laughs> but we make it accessible. And so people who can pay for the feedback can get it. But I think that's a big deal, Alex, that the lessons and prompts are free. Oh, yeah. And I it's funny. I was even talking about that to a friend of mine who was wanting to pick up drawing again. And I was saying about the premium tracks, but I'm like, oh, but dude, you don't have to like pay for that class and hang out with us every week if you don't want to, because this person already has a background in art. And I'm like, you can just look at the tracks for free and it can give you those little prompts of how to push and go forward from where you're at. And it's so wonderful because you're right. Like so often everything is locked of like, here's a great resource up, oh, but you got to pay for it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how people <laughs> pay business and pay their staff. I mean, we have a yes. really dumb business model that doesn't work that well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's what I, I made that decision when we started our problem. I, that's my fault. <laughs> Things are like that, <laughs> but I think <laughs> I think it's important that people have that option. And the other option that a lot of people are not aware of is for twenty dollars a month, you can become a Patreon supporter and you get access to the Patreon Discord channels, and you get much closer access to the staff, and you can go to a voice session once a week, it's drop-in. You just show up, you can talk about anything. We can critique your personal artwork. You've been doing those quite a bit, Lauren, and I think for $20 a month, it's a steal. How are those sessions, Lauren, in the Patreon channels? They're so intimate because it is a smaller group of people than it is here. Of course, we would love for it to grow because that is more Patreon supporters, but Everybody in there, I get to know them on a real personal level. And we talk about their work, but we also talk about things that are going on in each other's lives and how that is influencing art or, or moving or going back to school or illness or family. All of these things get brought up and it's just really rich really rich space. I really enjoy it whenever I have a voice session with the Patreon supporters. So we're trying to really offer various tiers. So you can do the tracks on your own for free. You can join the Patreon $20 a month, get some interaction with the staff on voice sessions and also typing in the Patreon channels. And then there's also the premium tracks where we really invest major time commitment to you as an artist. But remember, the lessons are there. Anybody can do that. And a lot of people are. We've had several people finish the tracks and it's been very inspiring for people to watch that progress happen. Michaela says, no, I wouldn't be able to make a living off commissions or selling art alone. Any suggestions on what jobs would work with art and still be able to pay the bills? Hmm. Alex, any thoughts? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was a barista for over seven years because it was perfect. It paid the bills. It helped with that fluctuating income that art has. Um, and it was when you find a good boss and a good shop to work with, they can be very understanding about, oh, that's great. You're here to work for us like seven days a week unless you have a gallery show coming up, in which case you need a week off. That's great. Um, so I think that would be my first jump is finding, I found that very fulfilling for a long time. So I think the biggest takeaway is a job that has that potential flexibility in the schedule, where when art is dead, you have a place to count on. But then when art is busy, you don't burn a bridge by 
spending some time on your craft. Michaela, I would add that people oftentimes feel pressure to have an art related job. I think sometimes it's validation and mm -hmm. you're an artist, you want to make art, <laughs> but sometimes having an art job can really burn you out to the point that you don't want to make your own work. And for some people, me, that's super depressing. And I would rather do a job that's not art related at all. So I still have the headspace to make my work. Like Lauren, you have a job right now that is not art related and you like that, right? Yeah, I work for an education technology company doing support and I love it so much. It I work from home, it's doing something that's still related to teaching but pretty unrelated to art and it i find i still have energy afterwards to go to studio and do things whereas when i was curating and gallery managing i was exhausted it was a really good job it was a fulfilling job but i just couldn't get around to doing my work which was hard We've got some super stickers from Sonnet and also DK. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> Ginger Cell is asking, do the snail mail people in the Patreon get to go to the voice ones? I think I have access to it, but I haven't gone. It depends on the tier. There is one $20 tier where you only get snail mail from me. It's an original art piece that is exclusive. I don't post it anywhere online. And then there's another $20 tier that gives you access to Patreon channels and voice sessions. If you want both of those, snail mail and access to the Patreon Discord channels, that is the, I believe, $50 tier. I think the big thing with thinking of the how to support art prof, like if you guys enjoy us, it's that great thing that I'm so happy is working. Like the query with you joked like, ah, this is our model, my bad. <laughs> but it's that great thing of like, help us with what you can when you can. And that thing of yeah. if you are genuinely unable to support even in a small way, there's no judgment like that. We're, that's, we are here for you. We want to make an art platform where we can help you with that. And if you are able to support, we're here for you too. You know, like whatever way you can give, if you want to give is super appreciated. Totally but agree. Lauren, you don't have to contribute financially to help us. What can people do if they want to help us, but they can't do it financially? Lauren. They can like or subscribe on the YouTube channel. They can still join the Discord and add their voice to the community because the Discord's so mm -hmm. cool because of you guys. It's not because of us. And you can share us with a friend who maybe needs to, they don't even have to be an artist friend. They can be a friend that's trying to figure out how to make a rubber stamp for some reason or is trying to find a watercolor set for for their child you know it can it can be anything like that and yeah the comment oh, comment, comment on things sorry did i do all the did i did i hit all the points like comment everywhere because every time we get a comment on youtube it boosts our standing on youtube and youtube doesn't care what type of comment you could just comment hi i mean that's not very exciting maybe you should write good job something nice something positive on youtube you and that breakfast? helps us it boosts... <laughs> i had bacon <laughs> just bacon no i didn't i just made that up <laughs> i have <laughs> bacon i think twice a year and my kids know that they suddenly make us bacon twice a year i'm like yeah because it's like pure fat there's a reason mm. i love bacon it's oh man that... c Kentrell says lauren can you tell us how you're using that spray bottle yeah so as i was saying before this this paint dries super quickly i don't know if i'm gonna oh i've got some water here so i can show you so I was putting down water to, to keep the paint 
pliable and to make shapes that were a little bit lighter and variable and in tone. And I'm doing that, that watercolor thing where, where you put the water down and then you take, then you take the paint and you go Whoop, and it, it makes that area toned. I like that. I don't know if I like that specific one, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Boop. Boop. That's Monica another thing says, about art school. Thank I miss you all for a very good learning channel and very good entertainment. Well, thank you so much for that, Maja. All right, everybody. Alex and Lauren will be in the Art Prof Discord right after the stream ends in the post live streams channel. If you're not in the Discord, you should join. The invite link is in the YouTube video description below. And it's where all the cool kids hang out. And you want to be cool because I was not cool in high school. And any chance I can to be cool would be awesome. Thank you to our top Patreon supporters. We are so happy to have your support. And I believe we actually went up this week in our Woo! Patreon goal. Yay! We went up $17. Which is so nice because we've been going down, down lately. And oh my gosh, it's so nice that it's going up. But we want to keep it going up. And so consider contributing. As we said, there are many perks that you enjoy as a Patreon supporter. Everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.